Hi, welcome to Nats part 13. And in this video, I want to give you an example or some example of how you can apply this type of technology to solve a problem. So I'll present an application for, you know, something we might want to um, build and then how we can use Nats to solve, you know, that, that problem or to help make that application a reality. Again, the way I'm going to show it is very simplistic and it's not the only way to do it. So keep that in mind. This is just to try and illustrate how you can use this technology. So let's say that I have um, a server that I need to monitor and I'm collecting some information in the server. So maybe I have an application that's running there and collecting this information and I can read it out on the command line. So um, the application is collecting the CPU utilization, the disk usage, you know, network latency, how long the server been up. So this is stuff that when I run the application in that server, I can get spit out on the command line. But I don't want every time I want to see what's currently happening on that server, I have to log in and run this application. So instead, I might change that application to use NATS as a place where it stored these keys and values, right? And so by moving to NATS as my key value store for the server information, now I can create a bucket in, within NATS for that particular server, server one, and have the keys within that bucket have these values. But then this gives me the ability to now have many buckets from each for one for a different server. So if I have three servers that I'm trying to monitor, I can have three buckets and each bucket would have keys and the associated value um, for those for each of the server. And again, I can put history on this if I want. And so this is an example of how you can use NAS for this type of thing. Now the example code I'm going to show you is not for this. Let's say we want to build a digital streaming application. So we want to build an application like Spotify or video streaming or something like that, right? So it's stream of digital content. So we want to use NATS, of course. We, this is all about NATS, so NATS is going to be the core of our solution. And so we can imagine that we're going to have a stream server, right? That's going to actually be pushing out information, the metadata about what is it that we want to stream. And then we'll have clients that can connect to NATS and they can now register or subscribe for that information. And so something that the streaming server could be pushing out is all the genres of, let's say we're doing movies or I'm sorry, video. Uh, let's say we're doing song or music. It can push out the song title for different genres, right? And so the clients now have the ability to subscribe to whichever genre they're interested in. So if you're a client that's interested in jazz, you can just subscribe to the jazz um, you know, content and now see titles of just jazz songs that are being pushed out periodically. And then you can choose if you want to play it or skip it or anything like that, right? Now we can change the genre from music, to, uh, the type of content from music or song to let's say it's video. And so you're just pu pushing out, streaming out different movie titles within you know, the different genres like action, comedy, sci-fi, that sort of thing. So how do you build an application like this? I'm going to present two different ways of solving this one application. And it's not the only two way, but I'll show you two ways of thinking about it. So the first way we can build this application is we can think of each key really representing a genre. From the NAS point of view, that bucket is really the set of genre or the collection of genres that are available. And then each key within that bucket is just a genre name. And that means that the value for key, so let's say the key jazz, then the value would be, you know, the title of a song by somebody, by the artist. And then another key could be blues. And then, you know, the value would be, you know, information about that particular track. And so what this allows a client to do is to then say, I want to listen on this bucket, but only for when this specific key, my, the key for jazz, so if we were, have we had another bucket for video, again, the key there would be the genre within videos or movies. And then you would just simply keep updating 
that same key. And so anybody who's interested in comedy would simply be listening on the key comedy within the bucket videos. Anybody who's interested in reggae would be listening on the key reggae within the songs bucket. And then they would see that key being updated. So let's jump to the command line and see the code for this very first example. So here we are on a command line. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're in episode 13 and we're going to start up our NAT server. Make sure that's running. And uh, if we take a look at what we have in our directory is we have our two example and the NAT configuration file. And NAT configuration file is no different than what we showed before. So and nothing new there. Okay, so let's go into our example one directory. And so um, let's see what's in there. Let's start up our VS editor. So the first thing we can do is look inside of the CMD directory and we have a client and we have the server. So for a server, we have the main Go application and the data. What is the data? Well, it's the songs that we want to play. And so the way this is organized is that we have a JSON file and each key is the genre. Okay, so in this JSON file for the data we have, we only have two genres. We have, we have reggae and blues. And for each one of those keys, there's a list of track information, right? So for each record within this array, we have the track ID, we have the title, and we have the artist. Remember, we could put in even more information like the length of the song and so on. And this is going to repeat. And then for blues, we have the exact same thing. So our server need to read this data. Remember, our server can get this from this file, or it could be reading it from a database. It doesn't really matter. But our server need to read this information. In this first example, we said that we're going to use one bucket, let's say called songs, and each key within that bucket is going to be the genre. So we should expect a bucket called song having two keys, and then every 10 seconds, that key is being updated with one of these songs, right? And you can choose how you want to update it. But in this code, I decided to pick one randomly. So we need a way for the server to read this information. So we have the idea of a track, and then we have the genre, which is a string and a list of tracks. So if we look at the model, that's exactly what we have. We have a track which is the ID, artist, and title. And then we have a playlist, which is a map of the string, you know, the genre, to a slice of track. And then we just have this helper method on track that allows you to say, take a track and marshal it into a slice of bytes. Why? Because when we post information on a key about a track, we're going to post everything. We're going to post the ID, the hardest, the title. So that's the model. And that's going to be shared between the client and the server. So what does this code look like? Well, very straightforward. Most of it we've seen before. And so essentially what we have is our server is going to, by default, we have the stream. For us, a stream is, you know, going to be the bucket. And so by default, it's going to be called songs, but you can rename it to anything you like, like you know, music, radio talk, whatever, up to you. But in this case, I'm going to leave it as song. And the server needs to get the list of, um, you know, files to play, um, songs to play, to stream out. So that's the data. And other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Our main program call this run function, which returns an error. And if it returns an error, then we say it's fatal, or we accept program as fatal. Otherwise, if we jump down to sort of the bottom of this, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. The only thing to notice here is how I decide to let my program um, exit. Instead of running for like a minute or 10 minutes like I was doing before, I decide to use signal, which is I create a channel to receive a signal. And I'm going to say, notify, ask the um, signal package to say, notify me on this channel if you get an, this interrupt. And so I'll wait to get this notification. So now my program is going to be blocked here waiting. And so if I use a type control C, for example, I'll log this message that I'm exiting and then 
at that point the program exits and I return nil because I exit the program nicely or at least the way I want and so um, this doesn't do a fatal okay but any other way in which the program is exited like for example if we try to load the playlist and I can't load it then it returns that error that's the only thing to note there but let's go through what our once we call run what it's doing first thing it's going to do is try to load the playlist when it loads the playlist it's just taking the string for that file name where data is and is going to return model that playlist remember we talked about the model already the model that playlist is just this map of the genres and the list of title tracks associated with that genre and based on the data we should just have in our map two keys reggae and blues and for each one of those keys we'll have a slice of track that's all that is so if we jump down to our load playlist we can see it just creates a playlist model open the file and then before closing it and then it decodes that information because it's JSON into our playlist and it returns it. That's all there is to it. All right, once we load our playlist, now we have that. So since this is all um, old stuff that we've done before, which is how to connect to NATS and get a jet stream context, let's skip down to where we actually start doing the real work. Now we've decided to create a single bucket in which we will um, stream our music, whereas each key would rep represent a different genre. So we need to create that bucket, you know, called songs or whatever um, we pass in as a stream name. But since we're going to leave it as songs, the default, so that's our bucket name. And then once we can either create that bucket or we can look up an existing bucket, we then go ahead and start streaming tracks into that bucket but before we get there if we can't create it or look up one of course it's going to be an error and our program is going to exit so when we iterate over our playlist what we're really doing is getting the genre like reggae and the set of tracks for reggae or blues and the set of tracks for blues so now we can then go say start up a go routine to say hey i want you to stream out these tracks for this genre which is going to be a key by the way within this bucket Okay, can remember we're using one bucket to as a collection for all the genre of um, tracks we're going to stream because we're going to keep updating the same key with different track value. So the track value is going to be updating um, while the key is going to be the name of that genre. And so what does this code look like? So if we scroll down, it's a very simple piece of code, right? Stream playlist continuously loops over the list of tracks for that playlist and let's do that and selects a random track to store in the playlist key or we could really say the genre right that is it the genre key that's really what what the key represent for us all right so let's see this program run so first off we're going to um, say go run and let's run cmd let's run the server and then we're going to be server at main that go and remember we have to specify some information so we're going to leave the stream as songs we're not going to change that but the playlist which is our data so we're going to say playlist and our playlist is in the server and then the data and this is song.json and so if we run this we'll see as our Look at that. We are creating two, um, you know, keys. And you can see we have one bucket called songs and it has two values. And we're pushing out information or track titles to each one of those keys. Notice it's the same key getting updated over and over, right? Um, I can say Nats key value watch I can watch songs and then I can watch reggae and notice only one value but it gets updated and so if we had a client application listening to this it can then present to the user that oh there's a new song title available um, do you want to skip or queue up that song or play that song right um, 
So there's an example of that. And then for blues, same thing, right? This is the current song that's available. And we wait a few seconds, depending on when this was last updated, we should get another suggestion. And so the user doesn't have to skip. Remember, they can keep playing this song. It's just they're being offered additional songs that they can play, right? And so we randomly selected songs. All right, so that works from the server point of view. Now let's go look at our client. So our client is very simple. Our client is really going to say, okay, which stream do I want to connect to? And then which genre within that stream? Remember which key within that bucket, this is the bucket or stream song, for example, songs, and then which key for that bucket I want to be listening to? Because this is the player. Um, so you don't want to play music from multiple genre at the same time, probably. You probably want to be able to just say, okay, I want to listen to blues or reggae and that's it, right? And so I'm going to skip over the usual stuff. Again, this is, you know, connecting to NATs and so on. So I'll skip over that. We have a jet stream context. And once we have that, then what we do, we check and see if our stream value is provided. If a stream value wasn't provided, we get all the streams that are available, which in this case is just songs, but it couldn't be, you know, songs and videos and talk and all this other thing. But we get all the streams that are available and we just list them. If a genre for that particular stream wasn't provided, then we get all the genres available for that stream. So again, think of a stream as songs and the genre within there would be reggae, blues, rap, hip hop, and so on. And we list those out if the user didn't select one. So we can, they can see what's available. If they provide both the stream and the genre, well then of course for that stream, that's the bucket, we just try to connect to it. We don't try to create it, we try to connect to it or bind to it. Once we bind to it, now we want to, we want to watch that a specific key within that bucket and that's going to be our genre that we want to watch for right if we just do a watch with a star that's going to look for all keys being updated or deleted in that bucket we don't want that we just want to watch for changes to the one key that we are interested in and then of course once we have that watcher we can go um start up a go routine to get the updates on that key and print it out so all the key, the code is there, so I'm not going to spend too much time going through it because this video is already getting very long. So let's just now say that we want to go run and we want to do command. Oh, sorry, we should be in the directory for example one, and then we do go run and we want to do cmd um, client and main that go. And if we run this without anything, notice. It lists the streams that are available, which is songs. So we can say stream songs, genres between that stream. And so we can say genre. We want to listen as blues. And now our application is going to play the songs from that um, in from that genre. And then again, we'll get another updated a suggestion. Now it says playing, but again, this is the UI, right? It can figure out what to do. It shouldn't change the person's music every 10 seconds, but offer them a new option so they can click next or accept or whatever. So, okay, so that's working. Well, let's go back and look at the second way we can solve this very same problem. So in example two, instead of using one bucket and each key within that bucket having the genre, what we're going to use is a bucket per genre. What that means is that let's say our bucket name is called reggae then each key will have like, let's say the track ID and then the value would be information about that track. Now we're gonna, for simplicity, we're gonna say it's a track title, but we saw just now in the previous code, what we actually store in the value is the entire track information. And again, we can choose to make this one because why? If the key is just the track ID, we're never gonna store any other track in that same key ID. So this really can be a history of one. And we can put a time to live of let's say one minute. Why? Because if we keep updating or adding new keys to this bucket, it's going to grow. If we had 10,000 reggae songs, then eventually our bucket is just going to be 10,000 key value because each key is unique. So we might want after a minute or two minutes for the older keys to just age out because later on we're randomly adding keys anyway, um, adding track titles. So we're going to 
eventually add back those um, things. And so we might be updated in this bucket every 10 seconds. So if we have a time to live of one minute, it means that at any given time, you're going to have a maximum of six um, keys in this bucket. Now, if you want, let's say the user to be able to see 20 of the last um, tracks that were suggested, then we'll just, you know, have to do 200 seconds instead as our time to live, right? You know, if every 10 seconds we plan to update it. So that way, after a while, if you just keep pushing out a new track title every 10 seconds, then eventually after 200 seconds, you're going to have 20 track titles. And then by the time you go to put the 21st one in, the first one would drop off, still leaving you with that 20, right? And so what does this look like? It means now that we can have a bucket call reggae and then here are the keys. The keys it could be right, regular zero one, and then you know the title or information about that track, and so on and so on and so on. And so we can have another bucket called blues. And then, of course, in this case, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to have its own keys and its values because it's its own bucket. So that's why. Okay, so let's jump to the command line and quickly see how this would this look like as a solution. So once again. Um, let's do Codium in our example two directory. And so we have the same thing is the same exact model as we had before that didn't change. And so for a server, the data is the same, right? Same exact data, but the server code now is a little bit different. This time we're not using one bucket. So we don't call it a stream. We don't have that. Instead, what we're going to do is loop over our data and create a bucket for each one of these keys. So slightly different. And so if we go down, we still load up the playlist as before. So I'm not going to go over that. We still connect the Jetstream and get the, the, the context, Jetstream context. But now when we get our playlist, what we're going to do, iterate over it. And we know that each one of those string is the genre. So now we say, hey, Go stream this. So we're going to say stream those tracks as this genre in its own bucket using this Jetstream context. So which means this playlist now must create that bucket. Unlike before where we created the bucket once and then we had keys to it. Now for each genre, we have to create its own bucket. So here's where things are a little bit more interesting than the previous example. So the playlist continuously loops over the list of tracks for this playlist slash genre and select a random track to add to the bucket. Notice it's adding to the bucket. It's not updating the key as in the previous one. Notice if the key already exists, select another track. So this is just the case where we're handling like, okay, we randomly select a track to play. We push it into our bucket, but it's already there. So we want to detect that because if it's already there, then we wouldn't have actually done an update when we said we were going to prevent a new track. So at that point, we're going to try and look for another track. So let's run the server and see what this look like. So we're going to say go run and the server with its data. We'll see we read the data and now we created the streaming buckets for reggae and blues. And notice this time we have two buckets instead of just one, like the previous example when we just had songs. And what we should see happening is after a while, because we put a time to live of, you know, one minute on our um, bucket key value, it means that we're going to be able to key up up to six songs. And so I don't know if you notice that here where we create our bucket, we give it the name, the genre name, and then we say time to live was um, one minute. Whereas before we didn't have a time to live, which means it could stay there forever. And that's okay. And so now you see we have up to six values and you see it would never go over six values. So as a client, if you connect and you say NAT key value and you say watch, for example, and we do blues and we do this, you can see these are the six tracks that are available. And then notice a new one was just added. But note, remember what's going to happen is the old value would also be removed. So we always going to see the last six when we anytime we connect as a client. So our client changes a little bit in this um, example, this time our client doesn't need to specify a stream, but rather simply the genre they want to connect to because that genre is now represented by this bucket. 
and now we're listening to all the keys in that bucket so again skipping over all this stuff that is just like before what we're going to do if the client doesn't specify any genre to connect to we'll list them what's available but listing the genre that's available is just simply listing all the key value stores right and then once they tell us which bucket or genre they want to connect to once we have that we'll just simply try to bind to it and then we're going to watch for all changes in that bucket notice not a specific key now can that specific key now represent a specific track and we don't know which key or track is going to be played so we can't watch for that we have to watch the entire bucket and so once we have a watcher we'll just go play the songs and so that simply means getting um, values for each key that's updated in this and so we simply loop over that channel and if we can get something like the is nil then we skip over it otherwise we unmarshal it into our track variable and then we print out the track name so notice these are all the songs that are going to be available and so if we do clear this and we see a go run client and this time let's just run our client with nothing and you'll see it's going to list the genres that are available so we'll say genre stream doesn't available in this client if you look here you see there's no such thing as stream it's just a genre and we say let's say reggae and so now it's going to list the last six um, songs and then the newest one now because we're in a command line we still see the previous one but again if this was a graphical ui we'd be removing those older ones and just replacing it with the new ones because the user can no longer select this song. If I try to, let's say, um, have the user try to select this song, because that information is not in the um, key value store, it wouldn't have access to where it's to stream it and so on. So, but that's like, again, that's a UI thing. So hopefully you found this um, helpful and maybe something a little bit more practical than just, you know, this is how this works and that, how that works, but then you don't really know how it can be connected to an actual problem. So hopefully this helped you see that. If you're not a subscriber and you've reached this far in the video, please consider being a subscriber. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for sticking with me and for coming back. Really appreciate it. Can't thank you enough. Take care. See you in the next video. Be safe. Bye.